A state bar association may discipline lawyers who belong to it, but may it also discipline non-lawyers who practice law illegally? The Wyoming Supreme Court answered this question in Unauthorized Practice of Law Committee, Wyoming State Bar, versus Stock. Richard and Geraldine Casal created a living trust. This trust allowed them to control their property while alive and transferred the property directly to named beneficiaries at their death. The Casals had no children, and the trust's primary beneficiary was a nephew whom the Casals treated like a son. Geraldine became incapacitated with dementia, and Richard was diagnosed with terminal cancer. While the couple was struggling, their friend Clyde Stock convinced them to sign documents for a trust called the D&G Bullet Trust. Stock was a licensed dentist, but not a licensed attorney. Stock told the Casals that the Bullet Trust provided extra protection for the Casals' valuable bullet-related patents and didn't impact their current estate plans. But the trust documents actually transferred all the Casals' property from the Living Trust to the Bullet Trust. Stock also convinced the Casals to execute a quitclaim deed to transfer their real property into the Bullet Trust formally and to sign powers of attorney that made Stock the Casals' legal agent. In addition, the Bullet Trust named Stock and his associate as trustees, gave them unlimited, irreversible power over the Casals' property, and protected them from any liability for abusing their power. The Casals' nephew learned about the Bullet Trust's existence and that it had essentially given all the Casals' property to stock. When the nephew told Richard, Richard asked his nephew to get the property back from stock. The nephew hired the Casals' attorney to undo stock's legal documents as much as possible. That attorney and a second attorney hired by the nephew each reported stock to the Wyoming State Bar for practicing law without a license. Both Casals died soon after. The state bar's attorney investigated Stock's activity. Stock claimed that he'd only tried to help some friends. However, other testimony indicated that Stock had preyed on the Casals to steal their estate. The bar attorney determined that Stock had practiced law by giving legal advice and drafting legal documents. The bar offered to settle the matter for a $300 fine reimbursement of the nephew's legal expenses, and a promise from Stock not to practice law again. Stock rejected the offer. The state bar sued Stock in the Wyoming Supreme Court, seeking an injunction preventing Stock from practicing law and other remedies. Following statutory procedure, the Supreme Court referred the matter to the state bar's unauthorized practice of law committee. Stock moved to dismiss the lawsuit, arguing that the state couldn't require law licenses and that no governmental entity, including the court, had jurisdiction over him. The committee denied the motion. The committee held a hearing on the merits of the unauthorized practice of law claim. Stock didn't attend the hearing, but instead sent in a 13-page affidavit. After reviewing the evidence, the committee determined that Stock had engaged in the unauthorized practice of law and recommended remedies. The Wyoming Supreme Court reviewed the committee's findings and recommendations. 